Okay, page five. Um, the five connectives have these names and symbols. So uh, we've gone through this in the investigation, but um, not looks like that, and looks like that, and kind of looks like the intersect symbol, and it kind of means intersect, or it kind of looks like the union symbol, and it kind of looks like union. Exclusive or, exclusive or, which they call exclusive disjunction, is like a, a um, inclusive disjunction with a line underneath it, right? And then if then is um, when you combine two phrases together and then you express that with an arrow, okay? Um, okay, so for questions one through nine, express each of these compound statements in words, okay? So um, P and then it has the, the uh, conjunction, which is same thing as and, Q. And P is Susan speaks French and Q is Susan speaks Spanish. So how would we write that in a sentence? We would say Susan speaks French and Spanish. Okay. That would be A. Okay. What about B? Um, not Spanish. Susan does oh it's French. Susan does not speak French. Uh, and she does speak Spanish. Okay. Let's see. C. Um let's see. Susan does speak French, but she doesn't speak Spanish. Okay. Susan speaks French, but does not speak Spanish. We can use but there. In writing, it kind of works better, right? Uh, not French and not Spanish. So Susan does not speak French nor Spanish. E. Uh, she she speaks French and Spanish not so she doesn't speak either one either so it's uh, or wait a second she does she speaks French or Spanish not so she does not speak both right she could speak one or the other so Susan does not speak both French and Spanish but she might speak just French or just Spanish. Okay. Uh, next one. All dogs bark, all flowers are yellow. Uh, so we're going to do all these combinations again. So A uh, would be both true. So all dogs bark and all flowers are yellow. All all dogs bark and all flowers are yellow. What a weird sentence. Uh, not, not P and Q. So all dogs do not bark and all flowers are yellow. C. Um, P is true, but Q is not true. So all dogs bark and all flowers are not yellow. Uh, D, not P and not Q. So both are not true. All dogs do not bark and all flowers are not yellow. E. So not to both of them. So if both of them are true, it's not. Okay, so all dogs. Uh, okay, so um, how would you say that? It's not true that all dogs bark 
and all flowers are yellow. Okay, there's probably a better way to say that, but that's what I could think of on the spot here. Okay, A. Chicago is the largest city in Canada. Jakarta is the largest city in Indonesia. So, um, let's say that both of these are true. So you say Chicago is the largest city in Canada. And Jakarta is the largest city in Indonesia. Easy. B. Uh, Chicago is not the largest city in Canada. And Jakarta is the largest city in Indonesia. Uh, let's see, now the Indonesian one is not true. Chicago is true. Chicago is the largest city in Canada. And Jakarta is not the largest city in Indonesia. Now, both of them are not true. So, Chicago is not the largest city in Canada. And Jakarta is not the largest city in Indonesia. Last one. It, they're, now, they're, it can't be that they're both true. So, it's not true that um, Chicago is the largest city in Canada and Jakarta is the largest city in Indonesia. It's very hard to write this in a sentence, right? I mean, Depending on how you read this, you know, that's why in math we have parentheses, right? We have PEMDAS. And in English language, you don't. And that makes it quite hard sometimes to say exactly what you mean. Um, seven. Oops. What happened to my colors here? Uh, ABCD is a parallelogram. ABCD is a rectangle. Which of these statements, A to E, cannot possibly be true in this case? Okay. Um, so let's, let's write them out. So A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. I'll just put P is a parallelogram. And A, B, C, D is a rectangle. B. Uh, B is like the first one is not true. So ABCD is not a parallelogram and ABCD is a rectangle. C. C, uh, the second one is not true. ABCD is a parallelogram and ABCD is not a rectangle. D. Um, Chicago is not the largest city in Canada. Okay, so they're both not true. A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, or they're both not true, is not a parallelogram, and A, B, C, D is not a rectangle. And E, A, B, C, D, uh, or let's see, it's not true that both that a, a B C D A B C D is not or is is both a parallelogram and a rectangle. Okay, so now let's see. Um, first, I'm going to make it all nice and red. Um, let's see which of these statements can't be true. Um, now we need to think about our geometry, right? So like ABCD is a parallelogram, ABCD is a rectangle. We just need to remember that a rectangle is, is actually a parallelogram because parallelograms don't have to be slanted like this, right? Parallel uh, parallelograms um, just say that, hey, you know, the opposite sides are parallel. So if the orange sides are parallel, red sides are parallel, um, they could be at right angles to each other. So if you have a rectangle, then you've already satisfied the definition of a parallelogram. Now the opposite is not true. If you have a parallelogram, that does not mean that it's a rectangle, or although it could be true. Okay. So, uh, but like, 
which cannot be possibly true. Um, let's see. So the first one is fine, right? That it's both a parallelogram and a rectangle. Uh, that's that's okay. It's not a parallelogram, but it is a rectangle. Not a parallelogram, but it is a rectangle. Well, if it's a rectangle, it is a parallelogram. So this this is the one that is not true, that can't possibly be true, right? It's saying that not a parallelogram, but it is a rectangle. No, that can't happen, right? Because a rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay. Moving on. Okay, so the first one, uh, P and Q are both true. So let's see, N is an odd integer, and it is an even integer. Okay. B. Uh, I think in B, the, the first P is not true. So we say... Um, n is not an odd integer uh, and it is an even integer c n is an even integer, an odd integer and it is not an even integer d um, not p and not Q. So N is not an odd integer and it is not an even integer. Okay. And um, last of all, it's not true that both that that uh, P is or no, the N is both an odd and even integer. Okay. And now it says, which of these statements cannot possibly be true? Cannot possibly be true. Um, and then which of the statements must be true? I don't know which one of these is easier to do. Um, let's see. If n, Can n be an odd integer and an even integer at the same time? I don't think so. And that's the first one, right? It's either odd or even. Even zero, I think, is considered an even number. So, um, so this would be the answer to the first one, right? That cannot be true. Which of the ones is always true? Ah, e, right? It's not true that n is both an odd and even integer. It can't be, right? It's kind of the same thing as what we said in a. So that would be that one. Always true. Okay. Complete the truth table for P um, and not P. P and not P. Okay, so this uh, looks more complicated than it sounds. If you just do it step by step, it's not so bad. All right, so uh, first it says, use the definition of negation to complete the column for not P. Well, if P is true, then not P is false. And if P is false, then not P is true. What about P is P and not P? What does that mean? Okay, so P and not P. P and can P can P be true and not P be also true at the same time? Well, in the case that P is true and not P is false, then true and false is false, right? They're not both. Or they're they have to be both true for true and true to be true. True and false yields false. Okay. Uh, false and true also leads false. So yeah, you these are not true at the same time. So they have to be false, right? Uh, let's see if we already did this. Finally, use the definition of conjunction to complete the column for p and not p. If you've done this correctly, you will be able to deduce from the true table that p and not p is a logical contradiction okay so both cannot be true at the same time so it's never going to happen that's basically what we said okay now when it says um whenever you have uh two things that are true like you could say um, um ted is a boy and ted is a soccer player ted is a boy and a soccer player 
um, if we say that one of those is false, then Ted is a boy and a soccer player becomes false also. If either one becomes false, it becomes false. So both have to be true for the and to be true. So P, Q, P, and Q uh, is true only when both are true. And then if one of them is false, then this becomes false. Okay? All right, moving on. Consider the statements. P. Sajin came top in mathematics. P. Q. Sajin came top in English. Write the statements. Well, I don't even know what that means. R. Sajin came top in math. Oh, I like they like he got the highest score or something. Came top in mathematics, but not in English in terms of P and Q. Okay, so. Uh, construct a truth, truth table showing how the truth value of R depends on the truth values of P and Q. Okay, so um, let's see. Came top in mathematics, so that would be P, um, and not in English, so not Q, not in English. Okay, and those would be uh, and, right? Because you want both to happen. That's R. Okay, so now we know what R looks like. And uh, so we're going to use P and Q to figure out um, when R is true. So we're going to have P and Q. And we do need to figure out not Q also. Do you see we need not Q? And then we also need to know uh, P, uh, P and not Q, finally, right? So let's say that P and Q are both true. Uh, and then sometimes one is true, and sometimes the other is true, and sometimes they're both false. Okay, so those are the, all the po those are the four possibilities, right? Now, uh, not Q is just always going to be opposite of this column. Not Q is always the opposite of that column. So we're just going to put false, true, false, true. Either you think this is really easy, or you're totally confused. Uh, now we're going to combine. Um, we're going to combine this and this with conjunction. Okay, so we're going to and those two together. So remember the rules we figured out up here. Two trues give you a true. Two falses give you a false. And any one being false makes it false also. So uh, let's see. Two. Uh, there's a true and a false, so that would be false. There's a true and a true, so that makes it true. False and a false, that makes it false. And a false and a true makes it false. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we're done. Okay, that's a truth table showing how R, which is this one here, depends on the values of P and Q. So if P and Q are both true, then R is false, for example. You see how that works? So these are like, uh, you can figure out if the R statement is true given like P and Q are true or false. Okay? The reason why I put 2 here is because 12 I want you to write here. Okay? Uh, let's see, this is the last one for this page. Um, so you're going to do the same thing at the beginning. You're going to put P and Q. Um, and then they have this R statement. Now, can you write this R statement in terms of P and Q? So N is divisible by 2. N is divisible by 5. And then N is divisible by 10 in terms of P and Q. Well, um, to be divisible by 10, something has to be divisible by 2, and it has to be divisible by 5. I don't know if you remember your factor trees, right? But uh, so that's equal to P is divisible by 2, yes, and it's divisible by 5. It has to be divisible by, bo by both. If it's not divisible by both, it's not going to be divisible by 10 either. Okay, so now we're going to make our truth table. We're going to have P, Q, and we'll have P and Q, okay? Uh, for each row of the table, write down a value of n, which gives a combination of truth values. Okay, I don't really understand what they're saying yet, but that's okay. So first I'm just going to do what I did before, true, true, false, false. I'm going to write down every single combination possible. That's every single combination. 
Now I'm going to figure out what the AND values are going to be. So P and Q is only true when both are true. Otherwise, it's always false, right? Okay, so we're done making the R statement here. We know when R is, is true, it's only when both divisible by 2 and divisible by 5, then, then the, the um, R is true. Uh, now they say, find a value of N, which, uh, which gives a combination of truth values. So let's see. So first they say, okay, find me a number which is divisible by 2 and it's divisible by 5. Let's say 20. Okay. Uh, then find me a uh, number which is divisible by 2, but it's not divisible by 5. So that would be like 4. And then they say, give me uh, a number that is divisible by 5, but not by 2. So that would be like 15. And then finally, give me a number that's not divisible by 2 or 5. I don't know, like 3. Okay. So we're giving n values which satisfy each of the conditions. And then we check now, which of these numbers, which of these four numbers are divisible by 10? Only this one. Do you see how that works? So we made numbers which satisfied the PQs and then it made the, the R column uh, work. Okay, and that is the end.